to the welcome to the podcast. Let's dive right into the first question I have for you because there's so many topics I want to talk with you about that are so interesting and I know the listeners are going to want to hear it. So the first one I have for you is, can you share a personal experience or revelation from your exploration of Taoism that has helped you navigate the complexities of life? Yes. I certainly can. Um, I'll try to keep this succinct. Uh, so, um, so what I learned from Taoism, and I came about it through Tai Chi. So I started okay. taking Tai Chi, and I was like, let me explore this a little bit. I'm really into this. So I began exploring Taoism, and I realized that um, the philosophy of Taoism is, is a broad um, philosophy. It's pretty broad. Um, it can seem vague at some times to people, but I actually found that to be refreshing. I actually found some of the, some of the nebulous concepts and, and vagueness of it actually refreshing um, because I came from a very strict um, Baptist Christian household where everything was black and white, right and wrong, yes and no, good and evil. And there wasn't a lot of room in the middle for anything else. So when I found, when I discovered Taoism and the concepts of um, yin and yang, which you have as dark and, and light, right? Or male and female, but it's, um, it never, it doesn't say that you have to be one or the other. What hmm. basically what Taoism says is that it's, it encourages you to walk the path between both. So that's when, when I discovered this idea of like gray is okay. You never have to, be, you don't have to be sure about this. You don't have to be sure about this. You can be comfortable and actually a sage, a wise person walks the path between both. So let me just explain it. And okay. So do you, you know, the yin yang shape, right? right? Circle. Yeah. It's got the two halves, the black and the white, and there's a dot of each in the other. Right. Okay. So in between the black and the white is a curving path. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of an S shape. And that symbol is so powerful because what it's telling us is the whole, the circle is all of creation, right? Or the Tao. And um, the black and the white is, can be, you know, male, female, uh, night and day, um, the opposites. So the black and white represents the opposites. Mm -hmm. But within the opposites, you have each other. So there's always darkness and light. There's always lightness and dark, no matter, no matter where, no matter when. So that curving path in between is the path that the sage walks. So it's, it's that curving path shows us you're not just supposed to be on one or the other side. You're supposed mm -hmm. to take the route in between. And as it curves, you judge, you decide, you discern, not even really judge, but you discern for yourself, you know, as you're walking that path, well, maybe some, some, maybe one day I'm dark, maybe one day I'm sad, but then the next day I'm going to be happy. And then the next day I might be sad and then happy. Or one day I might lose my temper and, and yell at my boyfriend and just be a uh, horrible to everybody. But then that next day I have a chance to be good, to, you know, to make amends, to learn something from what I learned while I was in the dark, to, to pull knowledge and wisdom for what I learned when I'm in the dark. And then same way, when I'm in the light, what I've learned from this light, what can I take into the shadow with me? So for me, does that kind of explain it? Is that, is that? Yeah, clear? no, that's, I'm, I'm in, there's many reasons why I'm in awe at this right now, because you're speaking a language that I wholeheartedly like have a heart, like all my work with my clients and stuff is that I always try to teach people that the shadow and the light are together and there's the light yes. within the shadow and that's your gift within the shadow. Right. And right. we live in a, a polarity planet. Right. Yeah, we do. That's the reality. We're right. in a polarized planet. Yeah. So and that sums it up perfectly. And it's not bad. That's the thing I love about Taoism. That polarity is actually not bad. Would you hear? I hate to say new age. Let's, I'm just going to use a term. <laughs> no, say it. Yeah. New age speakers talk about, oh, you have to be in the light all the time. 
you know, mm -hmm. and there is a change. There is a sea change of like of accepting shadow, you know, mm -hmm. and work doing shadow work. That's become so much bigger in the last, I don't know, maybe even five years. I don't think it's yeah. even been 10 years, you know? So, um, but yeah, so, and, and another thing I discovered about Taoism that I really, that really helped me deconstruct some of that Christianity dogma was that, um, of acceptance, of total acceptance. So I, okay, so instance, this is going to be an extreme example, okay? So I hope people can okay. kind of, um, kind of see through it, is that if there's a serial murder, okay, and they're going around and they're murdering people, that's not good, right? Nobody wants to be murdered by a serial murder. But that serial murder has a part to play. Mm -hmm. They have a function. And we might not understand it. It probably doesn't fit our morals and our ethics. And who wants to be killed, you know, honestly, or have their family member killed. But that person is serving a function. And for us to put a judgment on that function is wrong. It's like we're not, we're, it's, it's. It's not, we can't put a judgment on the, the person for providing that function. Mm -hmm. So, because who knows what that murderer, who knows what their path is? Like, who knows what they could be triggering for another person? Who knows what healing they can instigate, you know, in a family that has lost a family member? So, in Taoism, we don't, we don't judge the person, um, we appreciate the person for their purpose or their function. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, when I found that too, it was like, that's what really helped me really deconstruct judgment because man, I had some serious judgment going on. Serious. Um, oh, I'm sure coming, you, you came from what, a Baptist Christian background. Yes. yes. And fundamental wow. Baptists. So they were very like, no, no mixed bathing, no dances, no, you know, wow. movies for the longest time. We wouldn't, I had to, we wouldn't go to a, a restaurant with a bar in it. What? And then we also like going to school, I had to wear skirt or culottes. till I was like in the sixth grade. And then finally my parents were like, okay, we'll ease up a little bit. Yeah. So wow. they're, yeah, not all Baptists are like that, but my parents <laughs> were like kind of really strict about that. And, um, but in, in ways it was, it was helpful in ways it, it provided really good structure, you know, and, um, it also kind of helped me be, um, I don't want to reuse the word tough, but kind of like yeah. resilient, I guess that's a better word. Um, cause I did get a lot of teasing, of course, Yeah, you know, it's like, it's the weird kid. Word so is that what made you like, what, at what point do you're like questioning that belief system? You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. was there a point? Like, cause I know I was raised Catholic, although my, my family wasn't very, I wouldn't say practicing Catholics. My mom was more like, I just want you to have some exposures to some type of religion. So yeah, that's what our family had. But right. I remember like questioning at Sunday school, like, why do I have to talk to the priest to talk to God? Yeah. That's a you know what part. I mean? They're like, you don't ask those questions. It just is. And I you was know, just like, yeah. but that doesn't make sense to me. So like, that's what I'm wondering at what age were you like, mm, I don't know well, if I resonate with this. <laughs> probably about 11, 12. And I always enjoyed okay. the community of church. Mm -hmm. I loved going to the teen group. I loved hanging out with my teen friends. But, you know, when I started listening more to the messages, when I went into more regular church, not just Sunday school, that's when you kind of getting more like, oh, the Old Testament teaching, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, why is God so angry? You know, I was like, yes. why are they always, um, or he at the time, you know, why, why is he always punishing people and wiping out cities? And if he's a, it was a total dichotomy. Like if he's a loving God, why is he doing all these horrible things? Right. And then punishing you for it. And then punishing for it. But he <laughs> made us like this. Right. So I was like, that just, it was a fairness. It was a total, like, this doesn't seem fair. It just does yeah. not seem fair or make sense because I'd look at the old Testament and look at the new Testament. It's like, that's not the same God, you know, right. that's not the same being. No, they're very, very different. Very different. And I recently discovered why, but that could be another conversation. 
um, <laughs> where I discovered more of why. I got kind of a deeper dive in that. But that was really interesting. Um, but yeah, so, and then at 15, I had a near-death experience. Wow. And I almost drowned in a river when I was swimming with my friends. And um, I was, I, I, we were doing a rope swing. And yeah. if you landed in this certain area, you were fine. But the river was really high. It was really dumb. I'm, I'm surprised another person didn't have a bad experience. But it was swollen. The river was really, really high. It was fast. And we were doing the rope swing. And I dropped into, I dropped too far out. Mm. And the river took me. And it pushed me down to the, to the, the floor, d down to the um, riverbed. And I was being tossed and turned. And so I couldn't even figure out where up was to even swim to it. So I was like, okay, I'm going out at 15. This is <laughs> it was a good life, 15 years. <laughs> better, but you know, I'm going out. So, um, so I saw, you know, I started to have that whole life flash before your eyes. Yeah. And you know what people say, and this is so true, is when you're in that moment where you think you're going to die, your brain thinks you're going to die, you just get super calm. You're yeah. just kind of like, okay, this is this is it, you know? And um, I was running out of breath, and um, I was sitting there like, like, help me if I'm going to be helped, you know? Like, help, you know? Just help God, you know? And um, I heard a voice, and it just said, just relax. I just sort of had this voice in my head. It was like, just relax. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And what happened, because I stopped fighting, the river pushed me into an, uh, a calmer part by the bank. Nice. And I saw the light, and I was able to, like, just swim as hard as I could, you know. And then I, like, broke through the surf. I, I was, like, basically had no breath left, you know. And the next breath would have been in water. That's right. kind of where I was going. So I broke out. I was like, ah. Oh. You know, and I was way down, way down the river. And I saw my friend, like he was this big, you know, Holy cow. pretty far, you know, and I could tell he was like doing this, like looking, you know, and um, yeah. And he was, I could, you know, and I, I climbed out of the bank and I pulled myself out because they were even too far away to really come and help me, you know, oh so, but he was heading my way because he saw me pop out and I climbed out and was just like. I almost died. He was like, yeah. He was like, I was really worried. He was like, I was kind of the only one paying attention, you know, and didn't see you come up. He's like, but are you okay? I was like, well, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but that day forward, you know, when you have those moments, your brain releases certain chemicals and mm -hmm. actually brain changes your brain chemistry, right? So from that moment, I remember riding home in the car and everything was brighter Everything was more clearly in focus. Um, it was like, I was just like, wow, look at the sky, look at the trees. And I was quiet. Like, everybody's like, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm just readjusting to this, like, kind of new paradigm, you know? And, um, but yeah, I, I didn't tell my parents, of course, because I knew they'd, like, Get mad. Mad and yell at me. <laughs> like, why did you almost die? <laughs> All right. <laughs> wasn't trying to. Uh, I told him years later. So, really? Yeah. And uh, my mom was like, oh, I'm glad you didn't die. I'm like, yeah, me too. How um, long did that feeling last? Because I know I, I had a brain injury that I almost died from. Mm -hmm. I had like a 1% chance. And one of the questions people ask me all the time is like, what was your – what did it, what did you learn? You know what I mean? Like what has yeah. the insight been? And I said, I thought I got life before. Yeah. But to your point – Every I get life so much different now. Yeah, it's just like, di it's different. Yeah, it's, it uh, is. There's this essence of like, like you said, things are brighter. You understand what's really more important versus what mm -hmm. isn't anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain. It. It's just a shift that. Yeah, yeah, it's an and eight. Um, yeah, yeah. And I one thing I did my, um, is I really um, started really speaking up for myself, having more mm -hmm. of an identity, kind of being more sure about an identity um and then at 16 i started working at the renaissance festival <laughs> and 
those people are just great and they will challenge you in every way you think. And I learned so much from my Renaissance Festival friends and people who are not Christian. Like, I've been mm. around people my whole life who are Christian or Catholic or Church of God or right. something, something, you know? And for me to be around, like, pagans, um, Buddhist, Taoist, I mean, it was like, whoa. And I learned so much from them, too. That And that's a big credit I have to give to those folks, to my friends, because if I wouldn't have had that experience, I'm sure I would have got around to things. Right. But it was just kind of like a boom. Like, okay, now you're immersed in a culture that's completely different from your small town culture. And it's interesting that you were so open to it versus because, right, some people would double down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And be like, no, right. I know. So how was that? Like you said that you, they challenged you. What was like the biggest challenge you think you got away, you know, got from them? From the Renaissance to have an open mind, to be really open and to, and if, and to not immediately judge people because, mm. you know, I had to kind of get through this whole, oh, pagans are wrong or bad or weird, right. you know, but then like going to their rituals and their parties, um, playing music with them, singing music with them. Um, it just, it was like, wow, these people are, are just really kind, mm -hmm. really compassionate. They're so open-minded. They're way less judgmental than the Christian communities I had come from. And they're just willing to believe in magic. You know, and yeah. that was probably, um, you know, and the idea of working with spirit guides and gods and, and um, elementals. And, and I had a friend who was a fairy ambassador. Like he, that was, his, that was his like Renaissance festival character. Yeah. But he also really legit believed that, you know, like he would go and commune with fairies, you know. And I was like, and I had always been a huge fantasy reader. I mm -hmm. love fantasy. I loved all those worlds. I loved all those other beings. I was like, I know there's more than humans. I can't see you. I don't, I'm not interacting with you, but I, I know there's more. And um, to, to be, to have that, um, to have that opening, you know, to have that yeah. experience of like, oh, all the stuff I believed as a little kid, I wanted to believe. And, and, you know, I wanted to, um, and like, this stuff is real. You know, yeah. and they fully believed it and they fully had experiences with it, you know. So, um, yeah, so. So was it your experience with them? Like, so, and it's, it's, that was actually a good segue because that was kind of my next question for you is, is opening up to the spiritual support and spiritual worlds, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You've coming from this fundamental Christian background. It's yeah. not really something, I mean, I get it, you know, that people believe and still to this day, people are like fairies like i just had a conversation it's so funny you say that i had a conversation with someone the other day and they're like look there was all these little things they went to some retreat in montana and i'm like uh -huh. oh so the fairies came out and she's like yeah but like are they real fairies i'm like yeah like yeah you know, and the <laughs> elementals came out and she's like yeah. okay so it's interesting that people are opening up to that but yes. what i want to know from you is shifting into that did you is there a specific instance where you felt this profound connection or guidance from these other realms? Cause now you're exposed, mm -hmm. right. And you're opening up. So what was your journey with that? Like, first of all, I, I always wanted to believe in them. And when I was a little mm -hmm. kid, I'd play out in the yard by myself with like my little, I had Sylvania family. I don't know if you remember those they are the little mice and little raccoon yes. families and the squirrels. <laughs> I would take them outside and build them little homes. And I play underneath this big maple tree. And that was like my tree. I played underneath it. I built little homes. I built little tunnels. And so I was always kind of interacting with this world. But, you know, I was told that it was make-believe. Right. You know? Or at worst, it was evil. Right? Ooh, because it wasn't right. God, Jesus, or an angel. So, and even angels were kind of like, well, we don't know if we really want you interacting with angels, too. You know? So God really? and Jesus, okay. But, you know, and then so... I will have to say that I had a pretty huge epiphany. I was working at the Colorado Renaissance Festival and I had done um, mushrooms, psychedelic mushrooms a few mm -hmm. times before that with an ex-boyfriend and had some really amazing experiences. And so actually, let me go back to that. The first time I had a very 
um, visceral elemental experience was I was um, camping with an ex-boyfriend in the Red River Gorge and we had gotten up and I had only ate vitamins <laughs> and mushrooms. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so in the morning, yeah, not and a banana, I think. So <laughs> mushrooms and vitamins, not a good. One. <laughs> it's an interesting combo. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. You're like, oh, it'll help me offset the, you know, mushroom right. effect. No. So we started hiking. Well, I it hit me. The trip hit me right, and I was just mm -hmm. standing on top. We got we kind of climbed up the hill, you know. So my I'm got my heart elevated. You know, my heartbeat's elevated. I'm. Just, get to the top of this hill. I stand there and I go like, you know, I'm like, whoa, everything goes pixelated, you know, or like geometric, geometric, you know, all the trees, they all go geometric, yeah. right? All the limbs and stuff and all the plants. So I'm, I'm, I fall down, pass out, like just straight pass out. And while I'm passed out face down in the dirt, I have this, I live a whole life as a wild boar as a wild <laughs> okay a whole life like from piglet to like old pig to like rooting in the dirt to like you know this whole experience and then um i come out of that vision and i i hear my ex-boyfriend is calling my name julia and he's like shaking me right and so i'm like okay i'm coming to i'm clawing my way you know out of the vision and i look in my mind's eye and with my, it was weird because it was a mind's eye and physical eye thing, you yeah. know? And I look across the ridge across from me and on this ridge is a blue satyr. And he's standing there and he's looking at me. He's kind of like doing Nick like a satyr pose, you know, he's kind of like, <laughs> and he's, he's like looking over me. He's got a worried look on his face. Okay. And so I'm like, why is he worried? Is he worried about me? Who's he worried about? You know, but I can see his expression. He's like, you know, like, whoa. And then, so then my vision goes and I go and I see myself about 20 feet ahead, like looking down on myself. And then my vision goes to the other ridge on, on the left side of me. And I see myself standing there on this other ridge. So I'm having these like multiple viewpoints and they're kind of like, and I'm like, finally, like, I wake up, you know, I like come to Foley. Right. And he's like, shake. He's like, are you okay? Are you okay? And his face is white. He's like worried because I just straight passed out, you know, and hit my face on the ground. So um, I had a little bit of a bloody nose, um, but I just sat there like, whoa. And so that was probably one of my first really like, and I know, and people are like, oh, well, it's a psychedelic journey. I, I don't believe that. I, I believe that what you see during those journeys is true. Mm -hmm. They're just, um, they're things we can't see in our normal waking life, right? Our normal brain frequencies. Um, but that was my first one. And um, it, I felt, I knew that Seda, that blue being was concerned about me. It was like a, it was like a protector spirit guide. Not, a, I don't know about a guide, but definitely like it was protective. You know, it was like looking out for me while I was in the woods kind of thing. So... That was pretty much my big uh, first big experience. And then um, I had a pretty big epiphany in Colorado. I had mushrooms again, and I was sitting out underneath the full moon, which if you really want to have an experience on mushrooms, go and sit underneath the full moon. It's mm -hmm. really powerful. And um, I had this epiphany there of I was looking at the moon, and the moon was like talking to me. It was like it was sending down these like, messages you know of a love and acceptance and understanding and it was just it was a beautiful moment and right then and there and this kind of ties back to the christianity deconstruction is i realized that like, jesus kind of came through and i realized that um i could kind of let go of my idea that he had to be like the one mm. the one the son of god the one and i realized that we could all be that and he basically said that, you know, he was like, um, you know, I'm just a messenger, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I guess I reached some heights that a lot of normal humans don't, but 
you can just call me like a, an ascended master, you know, like I'm just a messenger. And, and that would like, phew, that like hit me right in the like middle of the brain, you know? And, um, so that was another really strong moment. I, it was an epiphany. It was really like, cause I just started crying and bawling and people around me are like, what's the matter? What's bad? Like, I just, you can't explain that stuff, you no. know, like, especially when you're in the moment, you know, you're just like crying and like, ah. and I remember, um, people were kind of like, whoa, that's weird. And then this is crazy too. So they were all talking to me and they were calling me Bob because I, like, I listen to reggae music. So they called okay. me Bob, like Bob Marley. <laughs> Rob Marley. All right. I'm like, okay. He's like one reggae artist, but okay. right. it was like, it was like new friends. I was just, you know, they were being cute and endearing, call me Bob, you know, I was like, okay, I'm okay. Whatever. You can call me whatever. But I was standing there having this epiphany and then they were calling me Bob and something spoke from like way down in my core and it came out and I could feel it like this, this power of a voice that said, don't call me Bob. Like spoke from out of me. Okay. And it was like True. this, I don't want to say beam, but it was like almost this collective, this, this, um, this consciousness that was part of me right. that was just telling them like, Hey, stop doing this. This is not who she is. It's not what she what is. This is not what we are, you know? And it was like this very authoritative, like, and then I was like, that like kind of freaked me out, you know, cause I'm already like crying and stuff, having this epiphany. And it was not my voice. <laughs> so weird. So but, you're channeling. Yeah, I was channeling. Yeah. And then yeah. everybody, uh, the people around me were like, okay, okay, we won't call you Bob anymore. Like they, it freaked them out. Like they were totally freaked out. And then because they were freaked out and young and, you know, maybe didn't have the best social skills. They just um, left me alone. They just left me there. Like at night in this field, I wasn't too far from my campsite. Like I knew, you know, cause we were by the camp, yeah. the Renaissance festival campground. So I walked back and sat up that, just that whole night by myself in my tent, just like processing just so many things. And, um, so yeah, that was, um, I mean, you see people now, right? Like Silas Ivan's coming back, you know, one of my, actually one of the friends I just had on here, does shamanism and she works with psilocybin and she's actually getting certified to have retreats. You see people go oh, for yeah. ayahuasca. Yeah. You know, and always people have these, and I agree with you. I think whatever you're experiencing during those times, right, is real. It's, it's getting your ego, whatever you want to say, that consciousness out of the way to really kind of connect in a different level. Yeah. And I think the key for you is, and you were younger in doing this, but you know, I, I see not, people go I to these retreats. 20. I was about 20 when I had that, the big epiphany with the moon and where that voice spoke through me and stuff. Oh, that that's about, not that. Yeah. So you, you were older. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And a lot of people will do that and be like, oh, I'm changed. But the, the other part of that is like, no, because now what are you doing to embody what you were shown? Yeah. Right. 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 Like right. you're having, these are messages or stuff. And it's like, that isn't, that didn't just change you. It's just showing you. Right. Right. Here's, right. here's some information or, or whatever you need right. to move. So right. did that, did those experiences then open you up to experiences with different like guides or. Yes. Yeah. So those were more, I, I would say those are more kind of opening experiences and also just getting really comfortable with um, non-judgment and yeah. um, acceptance and kind of being like, but man, I had to tackle with it because I'm also can be very um, um, in the mind. Um, like, so when you say that non-judgment, are you talking about the experience? Are you talking about you? Or are you kind about, of talking about, about a combination me. of both? Okay. Yeah, a combination of both. Like um, about not, you know, not judging experiences right away, taking some mm -hmm. time to, to develop discernment. So I started working on discernment probably about that time period. So okay. I've had a lot of experience working with discernment and really kind of um, – um, yeah, just, just that idea. And, um, so, okay. Uh, so yes. So by the time I hit about 30, I started, um, doing Tai Chi about 29, 
or so. Mm -hmm. And 28, 29, I started doing Tai Chi. And luckily, I had a wonderful teacher. He wasn't just a Tai Chi Tai Chi teacher. He was also a healer. Um, he was very, you could talk to him about anything. He was like a, a Catholic mystic Tai Chi, you know, healer guy, you know, so he's Catholic. Right. He really believed in all the mysticism of Catholic, of Catholicism mm -hmm. too. And, um, so man, he really helped me walk through some stuff. Uh, but at about 30, I, um, started, I was like, I had this moment. Where I was like, you know what? I'm tired of being like worried about, I like, I want to know who my guides are. I, yeah. I don't want to be like, I don't want to hear about all these other people's cool stories. I want to do it. So, you know, you read, you read, you read, you read, right? Mm -hmm. You study, study, study. And then yep. at some point in time, you got to do the work. Yep. You know, you got to, you got to cook the rice. <laughs> like the house teachers. Yes. Talking, does, talking and reading does not cook the rice, right? Right. So, um, so then I was like, oh, I'm going to start doing this stuff. I'm going to learn who my guides are. You know, I'm, I, I want to have this, ima not imaginary, but you know, this invisible crew that I know they're there. I want to know who they are, you know? So I started, I did a, um, I did a, I worked on my meditation. I took a class. I took a nine month class for intuitive development. Oh, nice. um, so learning how to read tarot, learning how to read, uh, you, um, do it automatic writing, uh, do, reading tarot for other people, learning about signs and symbols, um, just all different forms of divination. It was a really great class. And once again, I had a great teacher. I've always been so blessed with good teachers. I've, I've never had some weird, creepy teacher. They've always been super great. <laughs> positive, moral, ethical people, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, so I sat down one night and I, um, was like, okay, I'm going to do this meditation, how to meet your guardian angel. Right. And I was used, actually, this is funny, but I was using Doreen Virtues, um, <laughs> protocol, funny. like her books, yeah. you know, because she seemed she really accessible big. to me. She was like, you know, she's, she seems cool. She's not too witchy. Cause I'm still deconstructing some Christian right. fear that I had to, I took a while, you know, so still deconstructing some of that. So it's like, she's safe. She works with angels and mermaids and, you know, she seemed cool. So, um, I sat down in my meditation and got, got grounded, opened myself up, opened my channel up, you know, put the white light of protection around me, did all that stuff, you know, and, um, I sat there and, and, um, didn't take too long. And I was like, sent out the message. I was like, okay, I want to know, I want to meet my guardian angel. And, um, so, cause that, that's supposedly, they're the one that's closest to you. So yeah. you're supposed to kind of be able to connect with them easier. Mm -hmm. Uh, so open it up. I'm sitting there. I'm, I have, this is now, this is all closed eye visualization, uh, mm -hmm. my, mind's eye stuff. Right. So I'm sitting there and I'm sitting there and then all of a sudden this, this, purple cloud kind of billows up on my right side, kind of my right side of vision. And out of that cloud of purpley smoke, this bean emerges and it's male and it, he's uh, tall. He's long and lanky and he's dressed in like a, this is so funny, like a, a mobster style, like <laughs> suit pants. He's got like wingtip <laughs> shoes. He's got a fedora. And, um, so he kind of shows up and he's very pale, but he's got really teal, like blue eyes. And he's like, you know, the first thing he says to me, what he says, it took you long enough. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I wasn't expecting that, you know, of course, <laughs> you know, and I was like, okay, this guy's cheeky, you know? A lot so, of them are. People don't realize that. A lot of them are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, because they're like, About time. Right. <laughs> Hanging around Damn. the last 30 years, <laughs> right. you know? So, uh, <laughs> so, so I'm like, you know, and I ask these questions like, are you my guardian angel? He's like, what do you think? What do you feel? And I was like, right. Yeah. He's like, okay, then I am, you know? So, and then we talked a little bit. I got his name. His name is Gadriel. 
And so I was like, okay. And I kind of was like a little bit like, I can't believe it actually worked, you know? So <laughs> right. I, so I, uh, I was like, okay, well, uh, I'm going to go and journal about this. And he's like, okay, do you want to talk about anything else? I'm like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> it's a very short first conversation. <laughs> like <laughs> two sentences, you know, pretty much. Um, but it's just so floored because I, because it wasn't. Floored that it that, worked? Yeah. And that I wasn't, I wasn't projecting that image at all. Right. Because I'd learned how to clear my mind. I, I'd been meditating for a few years anyway. So I kind of like knew. And I knew it was like, it was authentic. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so shut it down, went down. And I, of course me, I'm always like looking up things. Like I gotta look it up. So I look up Gadger. I'm like, oh, I got a name, you know, that's cool. So I, I, I look up his name <laughs> and, um, and I see him on the list of fallen angels. And oh, I'm, wow. I can say that. You can. You're fine. I'm like a fallen angel, and see, I was still de deconstructing Christianity, right? In the fear of oh. like demons, fallen angels, bad, you know. But I'd been reading Zachariah Sitchin stuff too, so I knew that fallen angels weren't exactly what the the Christian community thinks of them. Right, right, right. There's it's so much more complex than that. So, um, so I was like, oh man, I was like, oh my gosh, and then you know, I look up what he what he was known for i'm like oh and um so what was he known for seduction of women okay and how to like how to kind of use beauty and makeup and like how to present yourself to like be more than you are Okay. So it's kind of like, it, it was kind of like, and, and also, and, and I have to go back and look, because I kind of had to put that aside, really. Yeah. Because I saw it and I freaked out. I had that, you know, that white, that cold fear that just comes over you, you know, and you're just like, and mm -hmm. my, I could feel my blood rushing from my limbs and my face. And I was just like, had this feeling in my stomach and I was like, oh crap, I, I conjured up a fallen angel. <laughs> you know like but did I, you like, feel that when you were in the moment that he was bad yeah like did you or feel any he, fear in that moment no no not at all right so okay. i knew so i was like well i didn't feel fear <clears throat> there's no alarm bells going off i said i'm reading this right. thing that's somebody's opinion or like some people's opinions and i was like okay i gotta like i gotta sit on this so right. i journaled about it you know and i talked to my boyfriend about it. i was like maybe i kind of my guardian angel's a fallen angel. He's like, well, he's like, don't make you snap judgments. Just kind of like, you know, just be careful. Just go carefully. Tread carefully. Tread lightly. I was like, okay. So then I went and talked to my Tai Chi teacher. And man, he told me something that really stuck with me. And it is a doubt, part of Taoist philosophy as well, is he's like, you know, do you have things that you've done in your past and you, that you regret? I'm like, yes, of course. He's like, do you hope that people don't judge you for that still? I'm like, yes, of course. I, I would hope people don't judge me for something I did when I was, you know, a teenager or, or whatever. And, you know, and, and so he was like, he's like, okay, well, same thing. He's like, this being is a person, they're going to have a past and they're going to have things that they're not proud of doing, but don't judge them for that. He, for that. He said, you know, make sure you really get to know this being for who they are now right. and how you, they make you feel, how you feel when you're around them. Um, you know, and if you notice things that are, are kind of starting to go south after you have been working with them and communicating them for a little while, just, just then, you know, it's probably not the best relationship, just like with a human being, you know, just yeah. like a friend who is not a good influence for you, you know? Um, so he said, just, just take your time, you know, use your discernment, um, hold off on the judgment and just let them tell you, let them tell you, ask them to say, Hey, this is why you're, why are you in this? You know, what, what's, what's a, what's going on? Why are you in this yeah. list of fallen angels? 
So it was, man, it was really, it was another one of those moments where you're just like, oh yeah, you know, just the simplest things. It could just be like, oh yeah, moment. Yeah. You know? And um, so, yeah. So did you so go I, back and ask him? Yes, I did. And I actually, I was looking in my journal about a month ago, looking at this conversation <laughs> because it's, it's just, it's helpful for any, you know, right. any new relationship. And um, so I was looking at it and and we journal, I journaled about it. I asked him all these questions, you know, and he was like, yes, I've done things I'm not proud of. Um, I, part of why I'm here working, serving you. I know that sounds, that's a weird word, but in service to you is because this is part of my redemption story, mm. you know? And so I was like, okay, so so I, I really, it took me about a week to kind of like get through that fear and kind of let it percolate and kind of let it like um, ferment almost, you know, where you just kind of like it, let it change into something else. And um, so fear became curiosity, right? And um, so, yeah. And so. Was it hard? Because so you mentioned earlier, being the Christian religion you came from, angels weren't a thing. They were, they were, but we, they were for God to use. They weren't really for okay. us to like. Interesting. Use. Or, you weren't allowed, right. You weren't allowed to right. whatever, interact with them. Right. So that, that bringing up and then that had to play into you, right? Oh. Going, okay, I want to meet my guardian angel and now I've attracted a fallen angel. Oh yeah. And you know what my Tai Chi teacher <laughs> said? He'd known me for a couple of years by now. He was so funny. He's like, he's like. <laughs> Of course you would attract a fallen angel right you know like of course because this is the baggage this is the dogma you have to work through you know yeah makes sense um so but he turned um he is an, uh gadriel my guardian angel is incredibly um loving supportive and he's sassy and sarcastic and um funny and he just really helped me for a, a while to really you know, to really even grow further in my spirituality yeah. and meeting other guides and um, just, and, and you know what really hit me too? And this is why I really encourage people to, even if you find out you're one guide, one guide, you know, right. it's going to really make you feel like you're not alone. Like you're not going at this whole life experiment on your own and you can have friends and you can have family around you and they can be as supportive as possible and the most loving people. But there's something to be said about a being who is, um, who's there, like in your mind, in your, in your soul, like in your heart, like actually like understanding and, and holding space and not being judgmental. And, um, it just, it just makes me emotional because it's, it's so powerful and just have, knowing that I can have this bad thought, I can do this bad thing. And this being is not going to judge me. It's not going to look at me weird. It's not going to raise an eyebrow, you know? And if it's a bad thing, they might say, Hey, do you think that was maybe the best way to go about it? You know, but, um, just this total acceptance and it's really powerful can really it can really change a person's life um so yeah so as i was um learning and growing more he eventually said okay you want to know more about me you're really curious he's like let me tell you my story i was like okay so he was like no i want you to write this down he's like i he's like i want you to write it down if it becomes a book great I would like you to tell my story. I think it um, needs to be heard, but if you don't do anything with these, this book, then that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. I just, um, let's just do this. And I was like, I'd always kind of wanted to write a book, you know, yeah. but I was just, I, I wasn't a writer. I had the imposter syndrome. Like I'm not a writer. I uh, <laughs> didn't go to school for English or, you know, writing or creative or arts, you know? And so I was like, I don't know if I can do this. He's like, just get some, get some cards. I got three by five cards. Like he told me, get some three by five cards and I'm going to download. I'm going to, I'm going to show you these scenes and you're just going to write them down, you know, and mm -hmm. he's, it'll be, it'll be easy. I was like, okay, sure. You know? 
And I sat down every night for about three months um, at seven o'clock. That was my meditation time. And I would write, I just fell out card after card, card after card, not every night, but most nights. Um, So, and at the end of it, I had this, he, he had told me like his whole story, basically how he went from being in heaven, falling his time on earth, and then going back to heaven and becoming like a guardian angel of me. So it was like this whole epic story. And I was like, so I got done with it and I had, and I didn't even really have to rearrange the scenes. They just, they just flowed. flowed. They just right. flowed. It was like a movie in my mind. I didn't have to figure out where the plot was going, who the characters were, anything. It just all came through like fully formed. And, um, so I, I started looking at all the things and I made an outline cause I was like, Oh, I'll, I'm, he was like, try, want to try to write a book? You know, like, sure. Okay. Let me <laughs> do this, you know? And he's like, I'll help. I said, okay. So, you know, I had this whole outline done. And I was like, this is not one book. This is at least three books. Right. Cause there's just so much. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. It's like a whole trilogy. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, cause I'm, one of my friends has written four books and yeah. she always is, you know, it's a huge, it, she's like, it's, because I've thought about that. She's like, it's a lot of work. So for you to get three and yeah. think I can't even write one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at it, the divine inspiration in that. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. There is a hand <laughs> definitely involved. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so I had this one, so I started working on it and, um, but that, I, I know I'm going off on a tangent, but, um, but that kind of was like, um, yeah, so I can talk about the book if you want, or I can talk about something else. I mean, I can, you know, well, it's funny because you it's almost like you're reading the questions already because oh. <laughs> that was the next one was like the Guardian Angels trilogy. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, can you give us a yeah. glimpse of the inspiration? I'm like, you already did. So yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, it's like, OK, she's already answered that. It's like telepathy yeah. here. But yeah, I think yeah. important is the the second part of that question, though, was like, how does this series did you reflect how does it reflect your own spiritual journey and beliefs? Like, you know, this is his story and in that, but is there some of you that's also kind of weaved into that from this knowing? Cause I'm assuming there was that, right? This is happening yeah. for both of you. Right. Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, yeah. So, okay. I'm not an angel, obviously. Right. You know, <laughs> well, but you know, I mean, we could all, de- you know, we're yeah, all yeah. divine beings, whether, whatever you want to call us, but go ahead. <laughs> But um, his journey of black and white thinking in heaven, him being really dissatisfied with the with that the legality and that kind of dogma of heaven of right and wrong, because he saw the Luciferian rebellion. Okay. He didn't take part in it, but he experienced it. So, but he was always different. He was a different. He was born and. When somebody reads the book, they'll find out. But he was born different. He wasn't born born to toe the line. He was born to question the status quo. But since heaven had gone through that rebellion, they um, they weren't hearing that. They didn't want the higher ups. Didn't want to entertain any of those kind of ideas at that time. So um, he, so him questioning, him being like. Hey, this doesn't, this isn't right. This doesn't feel right. I'm not happy here. Um, I need to seek out and find more. That was my early story too, right? The church is not being happy, wanting to seek more, like knowing there was something more, wanting to have a deeper connection with divinity, like a more personal Mm -hmm. one. So him and then him leaving heaven was kind of like, Hey, I'm leaving the house. You know, I'm getting out of my parents' strict kind of Christian household. Um, Him going to earth and learning that, you know, that's a lot of my stories, like being around different people, learning how to, you know, learning that it's not about just your agenda. It's not just about what you want to do. Um, You're, you're a team player, you know, Uh, no man's an island, right? And so him learning how to get along on earth, how to live as a human, like, from a standpoint of judging humans to becoming like, well, living yeah. as a human on earth, 
he kind of had to learn how do I put aside my judgments? How do I, how do I understand more of why this person is acting like they do? Like, is, is it personal? Is it really about me? No, it's about that other person's journey, what they're going through, you know, but also having boundaries, also being, you know, smart about the energy you do surround yourself with. And so, and then his journey of like, towards the end, when he goes back to heaven, it's like, okay, well, I've learned, I've sought, I've experienced trauma, I've experienced happiness, I've experienced love, connection, unity, community. And then um, now I can take what I learned from that and apply it and, and be a more, um, a wiser being, like, mm-hmm. um, a wiser, more accepting, more evolved being. Um, so then, you know, when he kind of returns, it's like, okay, now I can understand why heaven was like it was, you know, now I can understand, I can understand my problems with, because, because he wasn't happy with himself. Right. He didn't have confidence and pride in who he was. He didn't know who he was. So he couldn't even have like confidence and um, self-confidence in who he was. And so he thought like many of us do, it's, it's because it's, there's something outside of me making me unhappy. Right. But right. That's, that's not true. It's nobody can really make you unhappy, right? You decide if you want to be happy. You decide if you want to be, um, you know, um, satisfied, satisfied with something. Um, so yeah, it, it really is. And I, that's probably why we connected so well and we were kind of brought together is because through his story, I could kind of see my story and then we could kind of learn from each other because they're, our guys are learning from us too. Totally. They're always learning from us as well. Cause they have, they have their own mission to, you know, uh, well, yeah, it's every soul is expanding, right? And that's the whole connection of I am and you are and we are the yeah. same. And, you know, we're right. here, our souls really here to expand through experience. Right. right, exactly. And, you know, some people do it the hard way. So um, he was he was the hard way kind of guy, you know, so <laughs> but um, well, so, yeah. I mean, that's interesting because I know I was watching something and I forget the title of it. I'd have to look it up but anyways they were talking about the term luciferian Mm -hmm. and how it was actually shifted and it wasn't what it was they said lucifer really shone he was one of the brightest showing angels right right and when you look at the tree of life there's lucifer on the on the left and aramath on the right and lucifer you know is the spirituality and all that aramath is more the material the 3d world and then you got christ consciousness in the middle right and so they were saying that you know lucifer really he, he to be luciferian is to be too spiritual it's to be too positive too rainbows too, and sunshine yes right because right, lucifer right. was like i i shone so too in bright your head as well like two in your head totally two so the, right exactly and they said lucifer had to travel to the darkness because mm-hmm. he knew that was the only way he was going to grow right or right. expand right right because bright yeah. you can't see anything but brightness so he's yeah, like well, i yeah. have to go you have to right go you have to go to the Right. Exactly. He's like, I have to go to the darkness. So that was mind blowing to me because I'm like, that makes sense. So they said, same thing with Aramath. Mm. You have to have both. It isn't to have Christ consciousness. You have to have the spiritual and the material. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, Aramath believed there wasn't anything spiritual and everything's just right. Like ashes to ashes, dust to dust. There's nothing else. Yeah. Just this world. And that's not true either. It's like you have to have the combination of both to really, like you said, walk the middle ground. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, but, uh, and then, um, yeah, just from working with her, him, it really helped me to, when, when more powerful entities came down the road later, I had had a good discernment practice under my belt. I felt like I had a a protector that could be like, okay, hold on. That's a little too much energy. She's not (laughs) ready for that right now, or she needs to sleep right now. Right. So, yeah, it, it was just amazing, and um, yeah. So now you've met him. You've written a book, which you didn't think you could do. Right. Three books, right. actually. Right. 
integrated <laughs> all that, right? Yeah. So yeah. how does that help you to, how do you find harmony between like your spiritual explanation and your creative expressions now? Oh, I know you're um, working on another, another book. Well, I'm, right? I'm working on the third book. So I have the yeah. outline for the third book. And um, so I'm about halfway through the third book, but I've had the first and second edited professionally. And now I'm wow. sending, I'm going to be sending out queries to agents. I've got a couple agent connections. So, um, so how does my creativity and spiritually and spirituality coincide? Is that what you're asking? like? How do you find the harmony between, right? You've had the spiritual exploration with this angel and your creative expressions. Okay. How have you just, have you discovered like any surprising connections between the two with other aspects of your life? Like, it's like, okay, I wrote these but three books. Let me write something else or do something else or yeah. explain, you know what I mean? Explore something different. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, one thing that's made me, help me feel as far as like, I can do this. Like mm -hmm. I can write a book. I can get a contract. I can be successful. Um, even if I don't get a contract, there's plenty of people who are successful self-published. So yeah. it kind of had me looking at my, like, I don't, I hate the word career. I think it's so limited, but like <laughs> life, easy. your work, your, your work, your service, work. whatever yeah, you want to yeah, call it. Like, yeah. <laughs> Money earning potential, whatever. Yes. <laughs> you know? um, so, because I'm a piano teacher and I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, wow. I love teaching kids piano and music. It's so fun. It's so rewarding. But um, I would also like to earn more. <laughs> and um, it's a great job. I have a lot of free time. I don't have a lot of money, but I have a lot of free time, which leads me, which allows me to do my spiritual practices, right? And to write. Right. And, you know, I can go out hiking with my dogs every day if I wanted to, you know, and, um, we have a lot of woods around us, so I can go, you know, so by writing and, and doing this creative stuff, it's really, um, I think, I really think it's helped me be more open to like channeling as well. Okay. Like, I was going to ask that channeling. too. Yeah. Um, because this book came through its channel. Now I'm not marketing as a channeled book. I'm working as fantasy because, um, well, there's a lot of reasons why, but mostly marketing issues. There's only like three companies that produce channeling books that, you know, yeah. channeling books. And there's like 500 that, you know, do <laughs> fantasy, right? So, um, but, and I've also talked to my guys, I've talked to Gadriel about, it. I was like, is it going to bother you if this is marketed as fantasy? He's like, no. He's like, because, you know, like people are inspired by fiction all the time. Yes. Yes. All the time. Even, even as much as nonfiction, you know? Um, so it's helped me to be really be open to, to understanding that I'm capable of more than I thought. Mm -hmm. And that um, there's a wider world out there for me. And that people might actually want to read this and be able to discover things about themselves, you mm -hmm. know? And, um, so kind of jumping forward last March, I was, uh, I had been working with Hermes for about three years mm -hmm. and back in March and who uh, is Hermes? Let's put that out there. Oh, okay. So Hermes is typically known as the Greek God mm -hmm. of, of the road of the path of travelers, of shepherds, of merchants, of um, speakers, of dignitaries and diplomats, and um, a whole lot of other things. He has, he kind of has the, the biggest arena of all the Greek gods. Okay. So, um, so I've known about him for a long time, since my 20s, um, but, you know, it just wasn't really like, oh, Cool. That's a cool bean. I knew, I was more interested in Thoth or Thoth. Felt like more connection with him at first. And um, I had some visions with him. So, um, but um, different, different energy. People synchronize them together, but they're different energy. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, the Hermes thing is a whole, I feel like that could be a whole nother episode. I don't want to. <laughs> well, we'll bring you back on to another episode of that. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I mean, now I'm intrigued, but <laughs> <laughs> that's like a whole thing. Uh, that's going to be a whole nother trilogy. No, I'm just joking. Right. Um, <laughs> right. But so you started working with him. I started working with him. And then back in March, I was hiking in the woods one day and I was like, I'm going to write an animal fable with Hermes. And I was like, I'm going to have, I'm going to write it. It's going to be about Hermes and the blue jay. Because nice. the blue jay is an animal that, even though he's not, it's, they're not traditionally associated with Hermes because they don't have blue jays in Greece. Mm. All, all the blue jay lore, Native American lore, all the stories about blue jay, the qualities of blue jay, the spirituality, the spiritual symbolism of blue jay, the color. I was like, that is a Hermes animal. That is a Hermes bird. And he's, he's associated with birds anyways because of the messenger aspect. So Makes sense. Um, so I was walking. I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to write this Hermes and the J fable because I want other people to know about this connection. Mm -hmm. Cause there's this whole community of people of Hellenists who venerate and worship Greek gods. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I'm part of that community. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a Hellenist, but I do venerate some Greek gods. So I was walking in the woods. I'm going to write this story. So I, on Monday, this was Sunday. On Monday, I talked to my friend Ian. And he's a he's another friend, Hellenic friend, uh, but he is a Dionysian. So he worships Dionysus, venerates Dionysus. And I was like, I want to write this story. He's like, good, do it. You should totally do it. And, I was like, and, and he's like, and there's this contest. You should enter it in when you're done. I was like, well, okay, I don't know about that, but we'll see. <laughs> Let me get the story written first. So, so, so Tuesday night, I'm like, okay, I sit down at nine o'clock. I'm like, I'm just going to get some lines down just to kind of get things rolling. You know, I wrote from nine to two o'clock without stopping, no bathroom breaks, nothing. I was just like, type, 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 did editing, looked up some stuff to make sure, you know, I was, you know, talking about the right mm -hmm. stuff about the blue jay. Look, you know, just made sure I reminded myself, type, type, type. It, the whole story came out from top to bottom, no edits. Well, with some spelling edits, you know, right. but just this whole fable, animal fable, 1800 words of wow. um, Hermes and the J and it becomes ho how the blue Jay got like its color and it's and striping and stuff. But it's this fable about, um, yeah, about Hermes and the, and the J. So that's amazing. Yeah, it was. Um, and I, and you know what? It, I knew it was like one of those channel feud kind of things because um, yeah. I came out of it and I was like, whoa, what time is it? My back hurts. My butt hurts. I'm thirsty. You know, like <laughs> you were in the flow. Oh, what yeah. I like to call is the flow. Oh, yes. totally. Totally. <laughs> um, <laughs> totally. That, that's amazing. That I mean, because I do that when I paint, I forget oh, to eat. Yeah. I forget how many hours, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. it's that connection that divine connection flow state of just like okay i'm just you're so focused it's like let me just create oh yeah yeah and it was um and i was like okay done you know and so i um edited a little bit you know i just wanted to clean up some lines and stuff yeah and then i sent it off to the contest it was a rural dionysian contest which is a global contest for art music poetry it can be about dionysus but it can also be about other greek gods so oh, nice. they have like open submission. It's through Tumblr. It's on Tumblr. So I, um, yeah, so I entered that and I won. And you did? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, to be fair, there was only one other entry, okay? So, yeah, but still, I mean, for the short story category, you don't get a lot of entries. But, and you know what's funny? The other entry was my friend, um, Ian. His really? Yeah, he had a little short story involving Dionysus, too. So. Well, I mean, it's better than like no other entries. Yeah, I know, right? right. <laughs> you know I mean? Like, yeah, I won. There was no one else to compete against. Right. <laughs> right. So I, I beat my friend, you know. But um, but no, it was cool. He was. We were. So, are you going to make it into like a children's book? Yes. So, I am actually currently uh, working with an illustrator, and that was another. Okay. That can be part of the Hermes story. That was a whole serendipitous, not not serendipitous. It was a, a meant to be thing. Um. She's a local illustrator. She loves blue jays. She feeds them in her yard. She's really into the local um, environment, the floral and fauna in Ohio and like the eastern part of the U.S. She's a great illustrator. She has a um, 
Now, this is one of those those stories of how how sometimes things come and um, it's not what you expect they're going to be, right? Yes. But they're exactly what you need. What or, you need, or, yeah. Or you're like, oh, I, I am actually totally okay with that. I love it. So she, right. I was really looking for a watercolor artist because I had this idea of these really dreamy kind of washy yeah. you know, illustrations. And she is a wa- she's a colored pencil artist, uh-huh. but she uses like washes on top of her colored pencil. Nice. And so it, she has this real ethereal painterly quality mm-hmm. about her um, colored pencil work. And I was like, and she, she gets the concept I had of like, I want it cute, but real. I want realistic, mm-hmm. cute. She totally gets that concept. That's her style anyways. Um, she's been great to work with. She started having signs from Hermes, like the day I called her to even talk about it. She was like, she had these crazy Blue Jay interactions. She's like, you know, I just picked up the phone. Right before I picked up the phone, I looked outside and there was a Blue Jay feather on my doorstep. Like just laying there, Mm -hmm. like perfectly placed. She would go to places like and see like a Hermes picture, you know, or, (laughs) or like a sign, you know, of like, and she went to stay at this bed and breakfast and there was Blue Jay feathers, like by the signing (laughs) book, you know, (laughs) it's so obvious, you know? And she was like, she understood my connection to him. She didn't think it was weird. She didn't go like, Oh, that's (laughs) whatever. Like she got, you know, she's very understanding about it. She thought that was interesting. And so, yeah, so she's working on it now. Um, she's got about two panels, two full panels done because we're doing full panels, and then I'm putting the words in, kind of nice in the picture, uh, placing them strategically in the pictures. And um, so, yeah, it's gonna be probably about fifteen page, full you know, full page book, uh, fifteen spreads. So that would be like yeah. thirty pages, right? So, so I think so, it's safe to say we can call you an author. I don't <laughs> I mean, know. Obviously, I'm. <laughs> constructing that right because i should have said yeah but um a writer maybe <laughs> it's the labels you don't like i can yeah, tell I mean, it's like this is only my this is my personal opinion please nobody take this like right gospel truth but i almost feel like i need to have like things completed and like out there to say i'm an author well, I get that. I mean, you know, as an artist, you know, I've sold paintings and some people are like, you can't call yourself an artist till you've sold a piece of painting. And I'm like, that's, I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, it's, just, I, I don't, I don't, I, for me, it's like, right. It's too many labels. It's like, yeah. it's the act of doing. So if right. you've written three books, right. I haven't written any, I would like to, you're an author. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean that it's a simple, same thing. Like an artist, if you painted, you're yeah. an artist. Okay. All right. Okay. Then I'll take that. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like you've done the action. The, to me, the selling of is just a bonus. Okay, gotcha. Do you know what I mean? It's just somebody yeah. else saying, yes, I, I resonate with your work and I would love to own it or read it or, you know, yeah. which is a, a huge compliment. But, right. you know, well, you have to do the action first. Yes, right. And it's funny you say that because I would call any of my piano students a musician. Right, yeah. see? <laughs> and they're not doing like concerts to like right. thousands of people. Started, you know, they've been doing it maybe a couple months, you know, it's like, right. well, you're, you're an artist, you're a musician, you know? Right. So See, same thing. So it's interesting how what we'll do for others, but we struggle sometimes to do it for ourselves. So, but okay. So we've gone over an hour and that's totally fine. Okay. Sorry. And sorry. I definitely want to bring you back to talk about the Greek gods and all that, because okay. I, I'm going to be thinking about that all day. I'm so okay. intrigued by all of that. <laughs> but I ask everybody that comes on this podcast one final question. Mm-hmm. And it's, can you describe your spiritual North Star that guides you whenever you feel lost or uncertain? Yeah, that. Yeah, that's kind of a hard question to ask. Um, I should have thought about it a little bit more, maybe. Um, <laughs> so I think my North Star would be acceptance. Mm. Um, non-judgment and um, curiosity because I think a lot of times you can get past judgment if you're curious you know yes. if you're if you're curious to know why the person thinks like they do or why the government is doing what they're doing um, 
if you're curious, you can maybe, even if you find an answer you don't like, you can still, at least you've done the looking into, the attempting to understand. And then you might, you might have an understanding of why people do what they do, why they um, maybe make, you know, bad mistakes or are, are cruel to people. Um, and then also I would say that my Hermes is a guiding star for me. Um, just being able to work towards emulating a being who has put aside a lot of his own advance, his own comforts to continually to return to humanity and to help them evolve, um, and to help them learn, to help them grow is, um, that's pretty powerful to me, you know, um, because if we look at his synchronization, synchronization with Thoth, Thoth tells people um, that I'm not a god to be worshipped. I am a messenger. I'm a teacher. And he has shown up time and time over the centuries, uh, over the history of humanity, to help humans recover from, you know, uh, catastrophic, catastrophic um, global events. Um, from major climate change events and um, to be that, um, to give up, you know, your own comfort and your own advancement, maybe as a being to like stay close to earth, to stay close to humanity, to, um, to have service as your, as your guidepost is pretty, it's pretty powerful for me. It's pretty strong. And if I can emulate like, you know, a tenth of that, I I would feel good about my life. So, do you think you are emulating a tenth of that? Um, I hope so. I hope I am. So, I think you are. I, mean, I, I try to be a great teacher to my piano students. I try to be a good friend, a good partner. You know, um, and and to try to live by example. You know, to um, if I don't want people to judge, then I can't judge. <laughs> you know, and um. If I want people to be accepting, then I need to be accepting. If I want people to give more back to the earth and to humanity, then I have to give more. That's beautiful. Thank you, my friend, for being on here, for yeah, sharing your story. You. Yeah. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And everyone, as always, stay curious, stay empowered, and keep shining your unique light. Till next time, guys. Thank you.